Okay, welcome back. This is lecture five, um, part one on latitude, longitude, and the types of map projections. So that we're going to start off with what a surface grid is. Scientists have established a surface grid, which is a system of circular lines that you can use to locate any position on the Earth. This type of system, which is called a coordinate system, assigns to every position on Earth a pair of coordinates, which are two numbers, called latitude and longitude. Like any other coordinate system, the latitude-longitude system grid has two main reference lines, the equator and the prime meridian. Great circles are the largest circles that can be drawn on the surface of a sphere, like the Earth. Remember the Earth isn't exactly a sphere, it's an oblate spheroid, but we'll go with that. The equator is a great circle. A great circle drawn on the Earth's surface is approximately 40,000 kilometers in length. Other circles drawn on the surface of the sphere are called small circles, because small is the opposite of great. The equator is an imaginary line that circles the Earth halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole. The equator creates the Northern Hemisphere between the equator and the North Pole, and the Southern Hemisphere between the equator and the South Pole, because people are really creative in naming things. The angular distance in degrees north and south of the equator is called its latitude. Imaginary lines drawn around the Earth, remember those are small circles, parallel to the equator are often called, oddly enough, parallels. The latitude of the equator is zero degrees. The highest degrees of latitude are 90 degrees north at the North Pole and 90 degrees south at the South Pole. These poles are located at the ends of the Earth's axis, which is an imaginary line extending through the center of a sphere. Every 24 hours, the Earth rotates or spins on its axis. This causes day and night to happen. Except for the equator, latitude uh, lines or circles are small circles. Two of the special latitude lines mark the boundaries of the Earth that receive the most direct sunlight and the greatest heat energy from the sun. These are called the tropics. The Tropic of Cancer is 23.5 degrees north, and the Tropic of Capricorn is 23.5 degrees south, and between those two lines are what's considered the tropics. You can see most of Africa is in it, a large portion of South America in it, is in it, and none of North America is in it. The Prime Meridian is an imaginary line or semicircle that runs through Greenwich, England, from the North Pole to the South Pole. It divides the Earth into two hemispheres, the Eastern and Western Hemisphere. Angular distance in degrees east or west of the prime meridian is called longitude. Imaginary semicircles or meridians are drawn around the Earth from the north to the south pole, and they rep represent lines of longitude. The longitude at the prime meridian is zero degrees. If you move east and west away from the prime meridian, the farthest you can get is 180 degrees. The 180th meridian is half the distance around the Earth from the Greenwich line, or the prime meridian. The half of the world that is west of the prime meridian has a west longitude, and the half of the world that is east of the uh, prime meridian has an east longitude. The length of each longitudinal line or meridian is one half of a great circle. Distance between the meridians is the greatest at the equator and decreases toward the poles because of the shape of the Earth. The global grid is formed by lines of latitude and longitude crossing each other and can be used to name the precise or absolute location of any place on the Earth. Every place has only one absolute location that never changes. To identify absolute location, list the latitude coordinates first followed by the longitude coordinates. So in other words, you'd say 40 degrees north, 70 degrees west. Each, each degree can be broken into minutes, and each minute can be broken into seconds, because we used to find our locations by using clocks mixed with um, astro <laughs> astronomical uh, locations. We would use the stars we're using an astrolabe, and then we would also use a very precise clock to find out exactly where we were. So thus the uh, minutes and seconds. So we can be at 40 degrees, 41 minutes, 22 seconds north, and 70 degrees, 40 minutes, 22 sec seconds west. Maps are a means to visualize the spherical world on which we le live. 
A map projection is a portrayal of the Earth's surface or a portion of the Earth's surface onto a flat surface. On every type of map, there will be some sort of distortion. There is no universally perfect projection system. Okay, I'm going to repeat that, mostly because I stumbled over it, but also because it's important. There is no universally perfect projection system. There's always going to be some sort of distortion, and you need to know the different kinds of maps, projections, and what kinds of distortions happen, and what they're good for. Projections can be classified by their area or shape distortion, by the shape they're projected onto, or miscellaneous categories, which are unprojected and other types of projections. And we'll cover each of those categories. When we talk about the area and shape distortion, um, you can have equivalent or conformal. Equivalent means equal area, which means the area is similar on the globe and flat map, but the shape is not. Okay? Conformal, which the shape is uh, similar on the globe and flat map, but the area is not. And each one is good for different, for, uh, different purposes. If we look at the shape in which they're projected onto, the categories, you have cylindrical, which is the projection of a sphere onto a cylinder. The lines of longitude generally appear parallel. That's how you recognize a cylindrical projection. That's important. The lines of longitude are parallel, while the lines of latitude usually get farther apart as the latitude increases. These maps tend to make the higher latitudes appear larger than they actually are. So closer to the poles, it gets bigger. Azimuthal projections are a sphere onto a plane. When centered on the North Pole, this type of projection would create pie-looking slices with the longitudinal lines and the circles of latitude. The longitude lines tend to get further apart toward the edge of the map. Conic projections are projections of a sphere onto a cone. The latitude lines appear to be gently curving, while the lines of longitude appear to be converging. So again, each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. In cylindrical projections, the straight meridians um, and parallels are the key. That's how you can recognize a cylindrical projection. Most maps that you see in like National Geographic or, you know, just a map on the wall generally are cylindrical projections. The meridians are equally spaced and the parallels are unequally spaced. Okay, remember the cl closer you get to the poles, the farther apart they get. A Peters projection is a type of cylindrical map that de-emphasizes the exaggeration in the high latitudes. Okay, so it's trying to make those end points look a little bit more normal. A Mercator um, projection, which is the one most people are familiar with, emphasizes the exaggerations in the high latitudes. Why? Because fewer people live there, quite honestly. It's very um, egocentric. Uh, Europe and America are the ones that they're focusing on, and so those are more accurate, and the ones that are farther apart from that, they're less accurate, and they don't care. Um, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. The universal transverse mercator defines the horizontal positions into six degree zones, so a lot smaller uh, portions, and each one has a central meridian. So it's actually 60 different uh, cylindrical projections all combined into one. Again, they're trying to make it a little bit more accurate. The conic projections are characterized by straight meridians and curved parallels. The meridians radiate from the poles and the parallels are can be equally spaced. Common conic projections include the Albers, Lambert, and Polyconic projections. Albers equal area conic projections um, have the direction, area, and shape distorted away from the standard parallels. So the areas and directions are true only in limited portions of the map, and these are used in regions with longer east-west orientations than north-south orientations. So for example, an Albers equal area coponic projection would be really good in Russia because it's really long um, east to west. The equidistant conic projection, um, the direction, area, and shape are distorted away from the standard parallels, and the areas and directions are true only in limited portions of the map again. These are used in regions near the equator. 
And finally, the Lambert conic, are the direction area shape are distorted away from the standard pal parallels, and the areas and directions are true only for limited portions of the map. Most people don't use this one. And the polyconic has a scale true along each parallel and along each central meridian. Okay, this is ending part one, and we will continue with part two in just a second. Have a good day.